Good day mga ka-learners! Maligayang pagbabalik! After learning about spotting imperfect information, I'm sure you have been practicing them non-stop. Maganda kasi talaga kung mahusay na tayong makakita ng hindi tamang impormasyon, di ba? However, simply spotting imperfect information would not solve all of our reading problems. Just like doctors need instruments to function effectively and efficiently, so do we future critical readers. Today, we will add to your arsenal by learning about critical reading skills and strategies. Para ito talagang tumalas pa ang inyong galing sa pagkilala ng impormasyon ayong sa kailangan ninyo. After this lesson, you learn to read, interpret, analyze, and draw conclusions and generalizations based on passages. Specifically, you learn the following skills. Infer purpose, point of view, thoughts, and feelings. Point out particulars to justify a conclusion. Predict outcomes from a sequence of events and draw generalizations from specific details. Let's start today's lesson with a few brain teasers. Can you guess what these letters mean? I will give you 5 seconds to figure it out. Time's up! If you're having a hard time, let's look at it together. Notice how the letters are arranged and spelled. See how the word road is spelled twice, once horizontally and once vertically. Notice how they also cross each other. What do these clues tell you? That's right! The letters mean crossroads because they form two roads crossing each other. This is one way a critical reader reads. They look for clues to make an accurate guess of the meaning of what they are reading. Try and solve this riddle. I have seven letters. Before and after each letter, there are vertical lines. What am I? I'm sure you noticed this, but it's missing something. The details are incomplete, right? Here's another clue. I am a word. My first letter is R, my middle letter is D, and my last letter is G. Before and after each letter, there are vertical lines. What am I? Still finding it hard? It helps to visualize what you are reading. Try writing down the clues you have been given like this. If you are still stumped, here's a final clue. You do it with a book, magazine, newspaper, or article on the internet. If you answered reading, then you are almost right. Remember the lines? So what is it? It's reading between the lines. Why? Because the letters of the word reading are placed in between the lines. But seriously, reading between the lines is a handy skill to have. It is a figure of speech that means getting another message aside from what is written or mentioned. Look at this statement as an example. What other messages do you think this statement sends? If you read between the lines, you'll notice that government officials are not yet prepared to comment because of these reasons. They are being careful. They do not know what to say. The information they have about the controversies are not yet complete. Of course, there could be other reasons, but these are the most likely. Reading between the lines is not just guessing what a statement means. 
One way you read between the lines is to find clues to a term you are not familiar with in something you are reading. You tend to read on and on until you get enough clues for you to arrive at an accurate conclusion. This way, writers teach readers new things without having them rely on Google all the time. This also means that as critical readers, you should be able to recognize and use available clues in the text to infer or get the purpose of what you are reading. Let's now look at this passage. A beautiful bounty of white feathers at the blades of my back, lifting airborne, rising up, choking with happiness. I watch over the souls underneath. I sing songs of praises in the heavens. Going higher, the cool air caresses me, and my silk satin dress warms my torso. I am pure. I explore my wing and see how fast I can go racing with the wind. I leap. I fly. I love. I can't believe the beauty of the wonderful earth. I go to a waterfall sprinkling droplets on my face. I think I will remain airborne and pure. Can you tell what this passage is about? What is it? The passage talks about being an angel and the feelings associated with it. Read through the passage once more, but this time try and see if the words form clear images in your mind. Look carefully at the choice of words. White feathers, silk satin, pure, wing, lifting airborne, and others. Look as well at how the angel enjoys being an angel. See how the author describes it using words like choking with happiness or the sentence, I can't believe the beauty of the wonderful earth. All of these convey what the character is feeling. It is made even more effective because the one describing the feeling of being an angel is the angel. The author's use of I, me, my, and mine denote a first-person point of view. That is, the angel is describing itself and what it is doing. When you combine all of these as a critical reader, you get what is called a vicarious experience. It allows critical readers to experience what the character or author experiences as you read a passage. It lets you feel what he or she feels letting you tell others how the character feels. Now, let's look at how you can draw a conclusion from a passage. Read the following passage with me before we continue. Starting a stamp collection can be quite a challenging task. It takes a lot of preparation and planning. First of all, you have to prepare the materials you will need. For a stamp collection, this means an album to place your stamps in. Then, you need to plan your collection. Will you focus on a particular theme or topic? Some stamp collectors only collect stamps that depict a particular subject like flowers. Some only collect stamps that show faces of people. Others just collect stamps regardless of theme or topic. Like in any hobby, stamp collecting is a worthwhile activity but you need to plan before engaging in it. What conclusions about stamp collection can you draw from this passage? Just from the last line of the passage, we can conclude that stamp collecting needs to be planned well before you start with your collection. It then goes into detail on how you can start your own. Why is there a need to draw conclusions from your readings? Because these help you summarize the information or messages conveyed in anything you read. To do this, you need to gather the author's key ideas 
or points that support the author's conclusion. Key ideas and conclusions are important. They can affect the way we think and respond to a similar situation. Key ideas and conclusions should be analyzed carefully for clarity and better understanding. You can evaluate an author's key ideas and conclusions by comparing them with your own experiences. From there, you can create an entirely new set of ideas and conclusions. Moving on, we go to proper sequencing and predicting, which involves going through the proper order of a text before you make a prediction. This involves a bit of logic, but it's something that everyone can do. Look at the set of events and try telling it to someone. Can you predict what happened to Kitty? To the prince? What about the bear and the grandmother? Chances are, you weren't. What you should do is to arrange these events from beginning to end. I'll show the events on screen once more. Write down what you think is the proper sequence of events by assigning a number to each letter. I'll give you time to organize them. Good! Compare them with how I arranged Kitty Redscape's story. Does it make more sense now? Can you now tell this story to someone? This activity shows how you can organize bits of information into something more logical and predict what comes next based on how you arranged your information. Before we continue, let's look at these two statements. Education is the passport to success. Education is the real solution to our problem of poverty. Do you believe these statements? Why or why not? The two statements seem to agree, but a critical thinker, and by definition, a critical reader, does not readily accept whatever information comes his or her way. He or she actively analyzes information given and judges how it can be applied. Let's look at these statements once more and analyze them. The first one tells us that education is a passport, a document required for travel between countries to success. This implies that you need an education to succeed. While this is true, there are other ways of succeeding, and some of them do not involve having an education. Some people have achieved success through sheer determination and hard work. Some have even seen themselves as failures even after completing their education. The second statement forces the idea of education as the only way to get rid of poverty. But as we previously mentioned, not everyone becomes successful just because they finished their education. Although education can help you greatly in achieving success, a critical thinker knows that there are other ways of achieving success. If you want to become a critical reader and thinker, you cannot just accept generalizations without looking into supporting details, evidence to prove their worth. Now that you have general ideas on how to be a critical reader, it's time to look at a strategy that you can apply your knowledge to. Let's look at the read aloud approach. In this approach, you will be asking questions, making comments, and drawing your own ideas and conclusions as you read. The next time you read an article online, try to ask yourself questions as you read the article. Ask yourself why the author believes what they believe. Look at how the author presented their information, how it's arranged, the words they used, 
and where they claim they got their information from. After that, ask yourself whether the author's conclusions align with what you know. If it does, ask yourself if the information the author shared matters to you. If it doesn't, look at the author's key ideas and conclusions and see what conclusions you can draw yourself. Then, ask yourself whether the information you have and the conclusions you made will matter to you. With the skills you have just learned, it's now time to complete your critical reading skill set. It's time to put everything together and learn how to tell whether an idea is relevant and valuable to you or not. In the read aloud approach, you learn to ask yourself questions about the text you are reading. This time, I will give you a list of questions that will help you tell if what you are reading is relevant and valuable to you. 1. Are the ideas in the reading text arranged in a logical order? 2. Is there any imperfect information in the text? 3. Is the presentation of ideas so interesting that it can hold your attention and make you want to read on? 4. Are there irrelevant details? 5. Are the ideas from beginning to end coherent and understandable? 6. Are there adequate details to support the generalizations? 7. Are the ideas useful to you as a reader? 8. Are there weak points which you want to discuss with the author? 9. Are the words used appropriate? 10. Are the data or details enough for you to make sense out of the text? 11. Are there ideas which you find illogical so that you can't predict the outcome or ending of the events? 12. Are there ideas that are defective and questionable? 13. Are they workable when applied to real-life situations? Notice that these 13 questions cover everything we have talked about between this lesson and the last. To tell if a material has great value to you, all of these questions have to be answered by a yes, except for question 2, 4, 8, 11, and 12. Next time you find an interesting article on social media, Ask yourself these questions as you read the article before sharing it with your friends. This marks the end of this lesson. We hope you learned more about being a critical reader this time around. Remember these skills you have learned from this lesson and practice them. Inferring purpose, point of view, thoughts and feelings of the author or characters identifying details or particulars to justify a conclusion, drawing your own conclusions as reader, predicting outcomes from sequences of events, and drawing generalizations from a set of details, examples, and evidence. You have also learned the following from this module. Identify imperfect information in texts read. Use different critical reading strategies in solving problems. And evaluate the relevance and worth of ideas in reading materials. Best of luck sa inyo mga ka-learners! Magkita-kita tayo muli sa susunod na lesson. Huwag kalimutan mag-login sa inyong online account at laging tandaan, ALS tayo!